tonight, let them eat cake. Well, Elon Musk is letting loose on people who work from home, saying that they're like Marie Antoinette, and that it is morally wrong to not work in an office. I kind of think that, that the whole notion of work from home is, is a bit like the, you know, the, 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 the fake Marie Antoinette quote, let them eat cake. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's, like, it's like, really, you're going to work from home and you're going to make everyone else who made your car come work, to the fa work in the factory? You're going to make the people who make your food that gets delivered, that they, they can't work from home? The, you know, the, the, the people that, that come fix your house, they, they can't work from home, but you can? Does that seem morally right? That's messed up. You see it as a moral issue? Yes. I mean, I see it more as and just it's, a, it's, a, a, it's, a, a... it's a productivity issue, but yeah. it's also a moral issue. People should get off the gun uh, moral high horse with the work from home bullshit. Um, because they're asking everyone else to not work from home while they do. And yet it's wrong. By the way, that was a great interview with my friend David Faber. So out front now, Kevin O'Leary, the chairman of O'Leary Ventures and one of the sharks on the hit television show Shark Tank, favorite in my home. Okay, so... Let's just start here with this moral high horse business. Is working from home morally wrong? No, no, it's not. The world's changed. The economy's changed. Uh, the ethics of work have changed. We went through an extraordinary period during the pandemic. Uh, the idea that you split up a headquarters and you let people leave a headquarters and work from home was, was you know, not even contemplated. It was considered too risky. Now it's a proven, effective method of project management. In Elon's case, and, and, you know, to be fair about what he's talking about, mm -hmm. when you are in a highly engineered business like Tesla or, or uh, SpaceX, I get the idea that you want collaboration between engineers that are sitting around trying to solve design problems or whatever. But it has nothing to do with the other 10 sectors of the economy, which have already made a decision. I have 54 companies in almost every state, in almost every sector. We now know what the percentage is. It's just under 40% are never coming back to the office. Right, so we're not even talking about two, three, whatever. This is just like they aren't coming back in. Primarily in accounting, logistics, and compliance departments in various businesses where they used to work in cubicles. Right. And they had to drive an hour to the office. Mm -hmm. They found a different lifestyle and they still get their work done. Now, I can make them work in the office and they'll simply say, thank you, but I'm going to work for somebody else, your competitor. Right. So we choose not to do that. Right, and so, and it's also the models themselves. So the New York Times, this is, there's this great analysis the other day. Um, enough empty office space in New York City to fill 26 and a half Empire State Buildings. I mean, holy well, camole. New York, okay. New York City. Now there's a lot of issues around that, right. but I would just say, then you've got Disney saying, okay, get back in four days a week. Now, I will note, get back in four days a week is essentially giving up on a, on a day, which is still a huge shift in and of itself, right? A uh, 20% shift. Um, so is it really here to stay for the majority of workers? I mean, is this what you're going to see, empty buildings? Yeah, it's here to stay. The economy has changed, not only domestically, but globally. The way that work has changed, and if you think about, let's say, the accounting department or the uh, Let's say you've, you've got a, a compliance issue and you're saying, look, we have mm -hmm. to report to the regulator in financial services. I have many investments in financial services companies. Thursday, noon, deadline. I don't care when you do it at 2 in the morning or whether you get up and you know, feed your children before they go to school. I couldn't care less as long as on the drop-dead date the work is done. That's project management. Right. And so we right. are – and here's the thing that I, I, you can measure it by. Prior to the pandemic – I was very fortunate in a portfolio basis to make 15% free cash flow pre-tax. Today, that same portfolio, post-pandemic, with 40% of the staff working remotely all around the world, is going to do 17.5% free cash. That's a 20% increase in free cash flow. So you can't tell me this doesn't work. In fact, I want to do more of this because I'm reducing my costs of real estate. And, and one, one last thing here. How does this impact what you're seeing when you look at Shark Tank? You're about to start the 15th season. Thank oh you. Oh, my gosh. Yes, we're very okay. proud of that. So, and, and, and you know, as a huge fan, so what are you seeing changed? So we're, we have a record number of applications, and there's a single reason why. It's gone back to 2008 when we started. There is no venture capital money available right now. The entire banking system Freezing has shut out. down yeah. because of Silicon Valley Bank and the other failures and this, this period of rising rates. 
We are going to see incredible deal flow this year, much larger than ever before. But the terms, I'm licking my chops. It's back to what I love. There's no free money, and you've got Mr. Wonderful. The royalty deal will rule this season. Mm -hmm. This is like when I look and say, oh, my gosh, can't you just, like, <laughs> celebrate this person and give him a good day? No, and you guys, no. that is why you're it's called. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Sure. It's going to be. Listen, they, there's a reason they call me Mr. Wonderful. That's it. <laughs> All right, Kevin. It's great to see you. Thank, good to see you, too. All right.